Now we're going to do an example of solving a sine equation and a tangent equation and then kind of a different one that you haven't seen before. I'm also going to show you how to check things on the calculator, how to mark solutions on the graph and what they mean. Make sure to pause the video to take the time to write things down so that you have time to think about what I'm saying as I'm talking. So here we have a sine equation, 3 plus 2 sine of the quantity 3x equals 4.5. We're solving for values that are between 0 and 2 pi, or 0 and about 6.28. So all of our solutions have to be in that range. Later on when we make the graph, we're going to use 0 as our minimum x value and 2 pi as our maximum x value to see the area of the graph in which we want to find solutions. First step is to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, leaving us with 2 sine of 3x equals 1.5. Then we'll divide both sides by 2. That would just equal 7.75 if you wanted to write it that way, or you can leave it as 1.5 over 2. Now we have to undo the sine, which means we're going to have to use inverse sine. So we'd have 3x as inverse sine of 1.5 over 2, or 0.75. Now this is where you stop and write the general solution. Inverse sine, um, once you see the inverse function, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, we're going to stop and write the general solution for the right, in this case, the right-hand side of the equation. So notice on the left-hand side, we still have 3x. But on the right-hand side, we have inverse sine of 1.5 over 2, which is 0.848 on the calculator. And then the second solution is not negative 0.848 like it was for cosine. Because remember, sine is an odd function. It doesn't look the same on both sides of the y-axis. So the other part of the curve that has the same solution is actually uh, pi minus 0.848, the supplement of this angle. So these, the second solution is pi minus the first, and then plus 2 pi n. That looks kind of like an r, but it's supposed to be an n plus 2 pi n to add the period to both of those. Then I can continue to solve, and the only thing left to do is to divide both sides by 3. So when I divide both sides by 3, I divide both of these numbers by 3, and I divide the period by 3. So we end up with x equals 0.283 plus 2 pi n and 0.765 plus, or sorry, plus 2 pi over 3 n for the period. Now you could put that in decimal form, but since it doesn't turn out to be a nice exact decimal form, it's probably preferable to leave it in fraction form like this. Now I'm looking for all of the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So I start with my two, first two solutions. Um, if I subtract the period 2 pi over 3 from both of those numbers, I would end up with negative numbers. So I don't need to add, to go backwards um, and make n equal negative 1. If I make n equal 1, I add 2, point, 2 pi over 3, get these two numbers. If I add 2 pi over 3 again, making n equals 2, I get these two numbers. If I added 2 pi 3 over 2 again, 2 pi over 3 again, I would have two numbers that are bigger than 6.28, so I can stop there. So there are six solutions. Now what does this look like on the graph? If you graph the equation, 3 plus 2 sine of 3x, you would get this, this graph right here. I'm graphing from 0 to 6.28. So on my x-axis, my x um, values would be 0 to 6.28, and the y, I would go from my sinusoidal axis is 3 and the amplitude is 2, so the highest the graph is going to go is at 5, and the lowest is going to go is 1. So you can see the graph is between 1 and 5. So I'll just make my graph so I can see a little below the x-axis and a little bit above 5. So I think I made it from like negative 1 or negative 1 and a half to about 6 or so. Um, looking at the graph then, what I'm looking for is all the values of x that satisfy this equation. In other words, all the values of x for which the function on the left equals 4.5. So I'm going to make f of x equal 3 plus 2 sine of 3x for my first function that I graph, and my second function I graph is just going to write f of x equals 4.5. If I were to graph that, I could make that a horizontal line. I just dotted that line in. That's the line f of x equals 4.5. So each one of these points that I have marked has a y value of 4.5.
So now I just want to check on the graph, do the x-coordinates of all these points match my solutions? So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So I notice my first two solutions are in between 0 and 1, and I have two points that have x values between 0 and 1. Then I have two points that have, one has an x value between 2 and 3, and looks like the other is just slightly less than 3. So those are those two solutions right there. Then I have another solution that's close to 4.5 and, and another solution that looks like it's just about 5. So those are the 4.472 and the 4.953. Notice there aren't any more solutions to the right or to the left that would have um, a y value of 4.5. So I have found all six of my solutions. So when I ask you to check using the graph, mark the solutions on the graph, what I'm asking you to do is to graph one side of the equation as your function, graph the other side of the equation as the desired y value, and then find see if the x-coordinates for all of those points where those two graphs intersect match your solutions. Okay, let's look at the next equation. The next equation is a tangent equation. 3 tangent of 2x equals negative 10 for x between 0 and 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 3. So I have tangent of 2x is equal to negative 10 thirds. Now notice that number is bigger, is not between negative 1 and 1, but remember for inverse tangent I do not have to have a, a domain of between negative 1 and 1. Opposite over adjacent could be any number, so that's okay. I won't get an error message for that. I'm going to take the inverse tangent, and I'm going to stop and write the general solution, which for tangent is pretty simple. It's one line. I'm going to do inverse tangent of negative 10 thirds, which is negative 1.279 plus pi n, because tangent repeats itself every pi units, and so I only have to have one line. Once I've written the general solution, I divide by 2. Then I have x is equal to negative 0 0.640 plus pi over 2n. Then I just generally, I keep adding the period pi over 2, which is about 1.57. I keep adding that until I get all the solutions between 0 and 4. So notice my very first solution, negative 0 0.640, isn't actually one of the solutions in the interval that I'm looking in. But if I add pi over 2, I add it twice and I get two more solutions. When I add it a third time, I get a number that is bigger than 4, just slightly, so I don't want that solution. So I have two solutions um, in between 0 and 4. So let's see what this looks like on the graph. I'm going to graph the equation 3 tangent of 2x between 0 and 4. So my boundaries on the x-axis are between 0 and 4. Um, I want to find, notice that negative 10 is the y value that I'm looking for, so I'm saying when y equals negative 10, what is x? So I have to go down pretty far on the y-axis to see these where these solutions occur. So when y is negative 10, is my solution, does my solution match? So if I go up to here, I see 0.931. If I find the next place where y equals negative 10 and go up, you can see that's between um, 2 and 3, about 2.5. 2.502. Now if I was actually tracing this on the graph, um, I could type in a value, I could type in my y values or x values and see if my y value equals negative 10. Just to show you this on the calculator, I typed in the, the right hand side of the equation 3 tangent of 2x and the left hand side of the equation uh, y equals to negative 10. I set my window settings from 0 to 4 for x and from negative 12 to 2 for y so that I could see all the features of the graph that I wanted to see. Then if I go to menu, trace, graph trace, then I can just type in, so I don't know what happened to my, hmm, that's interesting. I don't know why my graph shifted up, there we go, it shifted back up to where it was. Um, if I trace. I can just type in my solutions that I had. 0.931. So we see that lands right on the where y is negative 10. And 2.502. And that also 
Okay, that might have not been the number that I remembered from my graph, 2.50 something. Um, and that also gives us negative 10. I think I've typed in something slightly different. Oops, let me find my... Oh, 2.502. So I must have rounded a little bit on that one. But I got negative 0.9 or negative 9.99, so I was fine with that one as well. Okay, last one. This one's a little different. So I want to show you this kind of in its entirety, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll, uh, yeah, we'll just look at it in its entirety. This is tangent of x, tangent squared of x minus 3 tangent of x minus 4. Now, tangent squared of x just means the same thing as tangent of x in parentheses squared, like this. I wrote it over here on the pink box so you could see it. So the, when you see the tangent squared of x like this, and it means exactly this, which is, and this is how you would type it in on your calculator, by the way. Um, so notice we have, and then we have a tangent at minus 3 tangent x minus 4 equals 0. So we have something that is in quadratic form. So I can use the same method that I've used uh, that I've used before when I had something in quadratic form. I can let I can replace tangent of x with a variable, and I'm going to use the letter u. So I'm going to say let tangent of x equal u. That means tangent x squared equals u squared. So this would become u squared minus three u minus four equals zero, and I could factor it into u minus four u plus one equals zero. So that would be the same as tangent of x minus 4 times tangent of x plus 1 equals 0. So basically I'm just factoring this instead of with x and, you know, x and x here. It would be tangent of x and tangent of x. So then I can, set, um, I can say tangent of x minus 4 equals 0, which means tangent of x equals 4. Tangent of x plus 1 equals 0, which means tangent of x equals negative 1. And then I solve each of these individually using the same method I saw, did in the previous problem. Find the, the general, uh, find the principal solution on the calculator, add pi n for the general solution, and then generate as many solutions as I need to stay between negative pi and pi. So I had 1.326. If I added pi again, it would be too big. So I subtracted pi and got negative 1.186. Then when I do inverse tangent of negative 1, I got negative 0.785. You also might have gotten negative pi over 4 if you didn't use control enter, which is perfectly okay. It's an exact, that would be the exact solution, um, plus pi n. Then I um, added pi to get another solution. So let's see what this would look like on the graph. Now you would not, when you get um, something like this, you're not going to expect to have a graph that looks exactly like a tangent graph now. It's kind of crazy looking actually. It has this kind of, it looks kind of like this. Um, so here's the graph. I'm looking for places where uh, the solution equals zero. All right, so where y equals zero, which is based, or these are the x-intercepts the x, on the x-axis. So I marked this line here. Looks like it didn't it didn't continue up like it should have. Um, so let me kind of bring this up. There we go. So if I'm going from negative pi to pi, it's in this interval. So I'm looking for four specific solutions: one on the x-axis here, 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 and here. So these are the places that make the equation equal to zero. So we see positive 1, so here's my 1.3. Uh, here is the 2.386, or 3.56. Here's the negative 0.785, and here's the negative 0.1816. So all four of these solutions are shown. These are the four x-intercepts between negative pi and pi on this graph. So when you're solving equations, make sure that you can actually interpret the solutions graphically as well. I will test you on that.